Hello. In our previous video on the quantum mechanics of hydrogen atom, we had obtained the three quantum numbers which uh, had come in a natural way during the search of acceptable solutions to the uh, to the Schrodinger equation. And they can be tabulated as follows, as I have uh, mentioned, uh, shown over here, that is n is equal to 1, 2, 3, and l varied from 0 right up to n minus 1, and uh, the value of ml varied from 0 plus minus 1 through to plus minus l. Now, the as far as the interpretation of the n is concerned, we have the energy uh, of the 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 energy of the nth uh, state, uh, the total energy of the bound state of atom uh, that can be expressed as E n is equal to this, and uh, that is. Uh, this, this, these eigenvalues which depend only on n are exactly the same as obtained in the old theory, old quantum theory that is by the Bohr's model and they are in excellent agreement with the experiment. So n quantizes the total energy of the atom and hence n is called as the total or principal quantum number. Now to interpret L we have uh, uh, the the L that we can consider comes from the radial wave equation, which is this one. And uh, as you can see, the energy term over there consists of the kinetic energy, and the kinetic energy is uh, uh, is uh, can be said to be comprised of two parts, that is the radial part as well as the orbital part. Now, the radial kinetic energy is due to the motion of the electron towards or away from the nucleus, while the orbital kinetic energy is due to the motion around the nucleus. So this is due to the uh, due to the roundabout motion about the nucleus, and this is uh, to and fro towards and away from the nucleus. Now, the the we make this substitution. So the total energy now can be written as the sum of the kinetic energy terms and uh, the potential energy U R. Now we make that substitution over to this equation that we had over here. That is for E and we have this as the result now the radial equation is concerned only with the radial motion of the electron and hence it must be free from uh, the orbital term that is the kinetic energy orbital kinetic energy and this is possible when the last two terms over here they must vanish or cancel out each other and from that what we can have is that the orbital kinetic energy must be equal to that value over to its right hand side. So we take that to the other side. We have k orbital to be now equal to uh, h square over 8 pi squared mu. Mu, remember, is the reduced mass of the electron considering the infinite mass of the uh, nucleus uh, in, that, in that context. Uh, we are considering the center of mass to be uh, within the nucleus. So if we have the value of L as the angular momentum, we have L to be equal to mvr. In this case, it is mu times of vr. And we have the k orbital term now to be equal to half times of mu v squared, which means we are substituting the value of mu from that above equation L over vr. And so we have v square r squared. The v square is cancelled out. So we have L square over 2 mu r squared. And now this uh, term over here and uh, this term over here, the right hand side terms, they can be compared because uh, we have the left hand terms to be the same. And from that, what we get is L squared is equal to L times of L plus 1 times of uh, H bar squared. So from that, we get L to be equal to L times of L plus 1 under root times of H bar. H bar, remember, is the Dirac H, which is H over 2 pi. And uh, the values of L as they vary from 0 to right up to n minus 1, they represent, uh, and from that what we can know is that like the energy term, the orbital angular momentum is also, also quantized. And this quantization is described by L. And so L is called as the orbital quantum number. And uh, the, the various uh, angular momentum states of the electron are denoted by the letters S, P, D, F, which correspond to the values of L as uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. 
and uh, the atomic states are denoted by writing the corresponding total quantum number along with these letters suppose we have a state like i have shown in that example over there where we have uh, the state uh, 2s which has n to be equal to 2 and s corresponding to l is equal to 0 likewise if we have n is equal to 3 and l is equal to 1 then 3 p p here represents the uh, the value of l being equal to 1 so likewise we are uh, like this we represent the states of uh, of the the state uh, in which the electron belongs to now we'll be interpreting the ml which is the as you will know as you'll find out what it is it is uh, let me give you a hint it's called as the magnetic quantum number i'm telling you slowly so we'll find out how now the interpretation of the quantum number ml comes when the atom is placed in an external magnetic field now we know that an electron which is revolving about the nucleus centrally placed nucleus this is the electron which is revolving around it now this behaves as a minute current loop and uh, and also a magnetic dipole and in the presence of the external field it is the magnetic dipole in an external magnetic field now its magnetic potential energy therefore depends upon the uh, magnetic moment and its orientation with respect to the external field but the magnitude and direction of the magnetic moment depends upon the magnitude and direction of the angular momentum l of the electron which therefore determines the magnetic potential energy as we shall see the direction of l is quantized with respect to the external magnetic field if the field is along the z-axis so if we are having the field to be acting along the external field that is uh, to be acting along the z-axis then uh, we have l the direction of l is quantized with respect to the external field uh, as uh, like this as the the component of l along the z direction which is l z so l z is equal to ml we'll take the magnitude of it l z is equal to ml over uh, ml times of h over 2 pi which is h bar and uh, therefore ml can be restricted within the values of 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 and so on right up to plus minus of l ml describes the quantization of the orientation of the angular momentum in a magnetic field which is known as space quantization and hence the quantization of the magnetic energy of the electron as well therefore ml is called as the magnetic quantum number and uh, so each of the eigenfunctions of one electron atom is specified by three quantum numbers which is n l and ml in which n determines the total energy eigenvalue L determines the angular momentum and uh, ML determines the Z component of the angular momentum of the electron. But for a given N, there are several different possible values of L and for each L, there are several possible values of ML. Hence, several different eigenfunctions corresponding to exactly the same value, same eigenvalue that is EN. Such eigenfunctions are said to be degenerate. So, which is just given by the picture that I have just drawn the degeneracy that is for n we have l to have n values right from 0 to n minus 1 and uh, we have m to have the values extending from minus l through 0 to plus l now let's discuss a bit more about the orbital quantum number the quantum mechanical description of hydrogen atom has yielded the result that the angular momentum of an electron in its orbital motion about the center of an atom is quantized both in magnitude as well as direction and they are given by the relation l squared is equal to l times of l plus 1 h bar squared 
and we also have lz to be equal to ml times of h bar l square is obviously the square of the magnitude of the orbital quantum uh, orbital angular momentum and lz is the z component of the angular momentum and uh, l and ml are the quantum numbers which restrict uh, l square and lz to certain specific values now to prove the above relations for one electron atom we must show that the wave functions of atom are eigenfunctions of the angular momentum operators which are l square and lz having the eigenvalues as shown on the right hand side of each of those equations now we have the angular momentum simply to be equal to the position vector cross product with the uh, momentum linear momentum vector and that gives us the uh, right angle uh, the rectangular components as lx ly and lz and they can be given as uh, y times of pz minus z times of py then we have z times of px minus x times of pz and similarly over here x py minus y px are in completely cyclic order so you need not be really bothered about remembering them uh, as you can see x followed by y z and z and y uh, when taken in reverse are in the negative similarly y z x then z x y so they are all in cyclic orders now if we replace the values uh, of px py and pz by the equivalent uh, differential operators so px as you know for as a differential operator is simply given as uh, minus i h bar del over del x py similarly is given as i h bar del over del y and finally pz is equal to minus i the dirac h times of del over del z so these are the uh, quantum mechanical operators of the rectangular components of the angular momentum now for lx we can now have the lx operator to be equal to i minus i h bar uh, y times of del over del z minus z times of del over del y and uh, ly similarly is equal to minus i h bar uh, z times of del over del x minus x times of del over del z and finally we have lz operator to be equal to minus i h bar and uh, z followed by x del by del y minus y del by del x all these are fine and uh, we have taken the the cartesian coordinate but take a case of the spherical polar coordinates then we have the operators to become in spherical polar coordinates these operators now become lx operator is now equal to i h bar sine phi del over del theta plus cotangent of theta cos phi del over del phi similarly l y is i h bar minus cosine phi del over del theta plus cotangent of theta sin phi del over del phi and finally we have lz which i can adjust over here instead of writing it down there so we have uh, lz operator in the polar coordinate system i'm hinting it over here so we have uh, lz operator just to be equal to minus of i h bar del over del phi now the square of the magnitude of the angular momentum vector l squared is simply equal to lx squared plus ly squared plus lz squared and so is the case with the corresponding operator terms so l 
operator squared is equal to LX operator squared plus LY operator squared plus LZ operator squared. So with all these uh, things available, we'll simply be substituting the values of LX, LY, LZ in uh, these three equations, that is this one, this one, and this one. We'll be putting all those values and we'll be using it in the operator equation over here and we'll get L square operator. Well, I tried not to burden you with all the mathematical uh, steps uh, that come in between. So I have written the value of L squared directly. You can test your mathematical agility by trying it yourself, all the steps that I had left out and uh, you can help yourself with that. But uh, just to make things easier, I have just focused on the result, the outcome. So this is the expression for the operator of the square of the angular momentum. Now, first we apply the LZ operator on the one electron wave function psi, which is a function of r, theta and phi. So we have LZ times of psi that is equal to LZ operating on it actually. So that is going to give us a minus I H bar del over del phi times of psi. Now psi as you remember carries uh, r, theta and phi terms. So we have uh, this to be equal to minus of i h bar. The r and the theta term if you can recollect what we had discussed in the previous video on this series. So we have the phi to remain within the differential. The function phi has the solution, if you remember, is equal to a e raised to the power i, that is the exponential of i ml times of phi. And with this derivative, what we get is uh, d phi over d phi is going to give us uh, a value of i times of uh, all of that, which means i times of ml times of the capital Phi. Now, if we substitute this value in the above expression, what we get is LZ operator operating on Psi is equal to minus I H bar I times of ML R theta, which is the capital theta, and the capital Phi. And all of that, well, the I's multiply, the minus I and I multiply to give one, and the minus sign is obviously discarded. So we have this to be equal to simply ML times of H bar uh, times of, well, these three just give us psi. So LZ operating on psi gives this value multiplied to psi, which tells us that this is the eigenfunction, eigenvalue, not the eigenfunction. The eigenfunction is a psi for the one electron atom and we get the eigenvalue as uh, this which is ml times of h bar which is nothing but lz lz is equal to ml times of h bar now don't confuse with lz and lz operator they are different things so this is the expression for the quantized value of the z component of the angular momentum of the atom the lx and ly obviously however do not obey the quantization rules now we can apply L square now over psi. We follow the same process and we have all of these terms minus of H bar squared. This one, the operator that we had obtained. And all of those bracketed terms, 1 over sine theta, del over del theta, times of sine theta, del over del theta, plus 1 over sine squared, theta del squared del phi squared and that multiplied to r theta and phi uh, that being the value of uh, psi in this case so this is going to be equal to minus h bar squared the r term can come outside that's not a part of any kind of differential over there 
phi remains over here sin theta d over d theta of sin theta d capital theta over d theta plus theta over sine squared theta and uh, here we have the double or the second order derivative of phi with respect to the small phi of which it is a function now differentiating uh, the phi equation we have uh, obviously we know that phi is where is that yes we had the value of phi over here so we differentiate it twice so we have d2 phi over d phi squared to give us minus ml squared phi and what this gives us is that uh, l square psi is equal to minus h cross squared r phi and we have 1 over sine theta d over d theta times of sine theta d capital theta over d theta minus instead of that we have what we had obtained this is ml squared over sine squared theta times of the capital theta phi that was uh, multiplied to ml square obviously has gone out of the bracket right there and on the left hand side and the function theta this which is this one uh, is uh, is a solution of the equation uh, theta i hope i've unclear theta so theta is a solution of uh, the equation uh, 1 over sin theta d over d theta times of sin theta d theta over d theta plus l times of l plus 1 minus ml squared over sin squared theta times of the capital theta and that is equal to zero so this uh, theta is the solution of that equation and this simply means that the quantity in the bracket over here is uh, means over here not there this one the quantity in the bracket over there is simply going to be equal to negative of l times of l plus 1 times of theta that is this multiplied to this so that means l operator squared psi is equal to minus h bar squared r phi and within the braces we have minus of l times of l plus 1 times of theta and uh, that gives us l squared operator times of psi is equal to l times of l plus 1 the minus get multiplied to give plus h bar squared r theta phi which is nothing but psi which means that this is the eigenvalue of that uh, of that uh, uh, l square operator acting on the eigenfunction or the wave function of the uh, one electron atom this is the expression for the quantized value of the square of the angular momentum of the one electron atom now in the final inst uh, installment of this part of the, uh, the of the quantum mechanics related to hydrogen atom we shall be discussing about the selection rules which are very important of course and what we inferred from what uh, from the results that we had and also the probability density and the expectation values uh, so to speak of uh, all of these in the upcoming video in this series till then thank you for watching